My name is Louise Regan. I am an architectural assistant here in HMM. For the past three years, I've worked on the University of Amsterdam, which is the big model here behind me. I think I excelled in subjects like art and then the sciences. That sort of pointed me towards architecture. The physics that I've used so far in my professional life has really come down to making the building energy efficient and also a pleasant place for people to live and work in. If you tried to ignore physics, you wouldn't get the building that you wanted. Heat is essential to human beings. Energy from the sun heats the ground, the trees, buildings, dogs, and even us. Sometimes too much. Heat is the transfer of energy. And there are three ways in which this energy can flow. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Architects have to understand this stuff so that buildings stay at the right temperature. Hi, I'm Hayden Thomas, and I'm an architect. This is my project, the University of Amsterdam. It's an absolutely massive building, as you can probably tell from the little orange people floating around. It's about a 90 million euro scheme, which means that there's an awful lot of work involved. We're totally reconstructing this entire university campus. The demolition will begin in February. The heat challenge. You need to keep your building warm. And the way I like to think about it is a bit like if you're heading out and your mother says you must wear a jacket, she might say you have to cover 40% of your body in a jacket. She may go on further to say that jacket has to be a certain thickness or a certain warmth. And that's exactly what the engineers will say to us. As an architect, I don't need to have come up with those figures, but I need to be able to understand them. On a cold day, heating a building is tricky, as energy transfers from hot regions to colder regions. An architect is always looking for clever ways to regulate this flow. <laughs> They tend to be fairly high-tech products now. They provide a lot of insulation within relatively little thickness. But we're using banded polyurethane. And all of the windows in the building, they're all double glazed to help limit the transmission of energy from inside to outside. In a solid, particles are held in position, but they are wobbling a bit. When the solid is heated, those particles really start to wobble and they wiggle, bump, shove and vibrate their neighbours making them wobble too. And then they wibble and wobble, and in turn bump into their neighbours. This process is called conduction. This is the model shop, if you'd like to come this way. In university you make all your own models, but now in big practices they tend to have model makers who do the job much quicker and much better than we do. In liquids and gases, the particles can move around. In gases, they move around a lot. If you heat gas, the particles speed up and take up more space, and the gas becomes less dense and so rises. This process is called convection. When you think of modern architecture, you often think of a huge glass building. That's really quite inefficient. There's no client out there that's going to want an inefficient building. It's also not environmentally friendly, which is something that we would work very hard to achieve. Here's one I made earlier. So the design process for any project will start with your pencil. In principle, most things start with some kind of sketch idea that you then tend to work up on the computer. This is actually one of the bits of the tower. We've done a lot of work in-house using 3D software, not just for producing nice images that the client wants to see, but also for testing bits of the design. And you also have to balance what looks good and what performs well. Artists, like we, we're very creative and we like things to look good. We always have to bring it back to the science, the physics of it. Is, so as well as it looking nice from the outside, it also has to perform well for the people who live and work in there. This diagram explains the, the makeup of the facade panel. It starts simply by a frame. Then we add the insulation, which we spoke about was like a jacket. And then you add some shading, so some blinds, so you can control how much light comes into the room. Then we add the glass, which stops rain coming into the building, and also will help stop too much light entering the room. Radiation is the transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. Unlike conduction and convection, radiation doesn't need a material. Electromagnetic waves can travel through space, which is lucky, because otherwise the Earth would be a very cold place. When you go into your conservatory, usually it's very, very warm. And then you might go into a room with no windows and it usually feels a bit colder. Light comes into the room. Every surface that it touches, it heats up. So you end up overheating your building. When the sun's radiation arrives at the Earth, it can be absorbed or reflected. Black objects absorb the sun's energy best. 
while white ones reflect more. But you couldn't have every building painted white. Initially it was white, however, this is a big building and it makes a big building look even bigger. You know the, the way they tell you if um, you wear black it's more slimming. These are two very, very big buildings so we thought black would look quite, quite smart and elegant on the skyline. It's not just the sun that gives off radiation, everything does. You do, trees do and even dogs do. It's just that dogs aren't as hot as the sun, so they give off longer waves, which are invisible. We can't see these infrared waves, except when you use special thermal imaging cameras. My levels were math, physics, IT and graphical communication. Being an architect, it's a great profession. There's immense satisfaction in seeing something you've worked on built. It's so rewarding when you finish a building and it's, it's, it's there in front of you. How often do I use physics? Some days it's 100%. Physics is a creative tool as well, and sometimes you can't get the best result without applying it. <laughs>